Good morning and welcome. I am Dr. Vanessa Anderson, founding principal of Bard High School Early College, DC. And good morning, my name is Kennard Branch, head of school at Bard, DC. Yeah. Principal Anderson and I are grateful to host you all today to celebrate this wonderful new building. We have many people to thank for making our school's permanent home a reality. Mayor Bowser, Chancellor Furby, Councilman White, Director Anderson, and many others have all played a crucial role in our arrival to this moment. I am thankful for this tight-knit group of community leaders. The Bard High School Early College Educational Model is centered around giving students the ability to take college courses while simultaneously earning their high school diplomas. And we're so grateful for, to Mayor Bowser for believing in students, believing in Bard, and making this educational, mo and educational model possible in the District of Columbia. And Bard DC students give us many reasons why we, should, why we should believe in them. We shared our inaugural school year with a global health pandemic, and our students persevered. This year's graduating seniors, or year, one, year twos, because they are indeed in their second year of Bard College, who were first year students, meaning high school freshmen at the time the Bard opened, are all graduating with college credits, the vast majority with an associate's degree. The success of Bard's student's body would not be possible without a dedicated staff and a committed group of family and relatives. Thank you to our amazing team and our full supports. I'm excited for the memories that will be made in this new theater, in our classrooms, and in these amazing new athletics and art spaces around our school. Now, before we bring up our mayor, before we bring up our councilman to speak, it's my honor to introduce Bar DC's student government president, Mr. Josiah Best, to say a few words. <laughs> Josiah, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and Happy New Year's to everyone. My name is Josiah Best, and I am a year two here at Bard High School Early College, DC. Um, and no, that does not mean that I am a 10th grader. Um, that means I am a 12th grader. Now here at Bard, we classify our levels, our grade levels in the following order, 9th grade, 10th grade, year one, and year two to acknowledge our students' commitment to the Bard Early College Program. I am also the president of our Student Government Association, lead mentor in our chapter of Bard's Big Sib Peer Mentoring Program, and the chief editor of the yearbook committee. In opening our new building, there is so much to look forward to with the brand new facilities that help foster the independence, responsibility, and innovation that our philosophy inspires. I am particularly excited about putting my skills in technical theater to the test right here in our black box. Now, I know the lessons and, and relationships shared in this space will enrich the education of not only myself, but my peers as well and help me to secure my own success. Now, on the topic of enriching educations, I am honored to introduce a native Washingtonian, someone we all know is an advocate for education in the District of Columbia, Councilman White. Thank you for investing in our future, and congratulations, uh, yeah, and congratulations. Now, please give me a warm welcome to Mayor, I mean to, <laughs> sorry, Please give a warm welcome to Councilman Treyon White. Thank you, Mr. Best. Uh, so, good morning. It's still morning. Uh, this is a, a vision come true, right? Uh, for those who don't know, first I want to thank Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Bowser. I want to thank Deputy Mayor Kahn, uh, Director Keith Anderson, uh, Dr. Lewis Furby, where did Dr. Furby go? 
There you go, right there. All right, cool. Um, and, and, t and to the leadership of this school, um, for those who don't know, I had the opportunity of visiting um, Bard in Baltimore in 2017. Was that 2017? Time flies. And I got an opportunity to meet some of the young people there, and I was amazed at just the diversity and just the, uh, the amount of learning that was happening in a non-traditional way with students from all walks of life. And I said, man, we have to have this in D.C., um, and so I'm equally as excited to come into this campus here in the Congress Heights community. Not only is it in D.C., it's right here in Ward 8. Give it a round of applause right here in Ward 8. Absolutely. I'm also encouraged, uh, when I walked in the door, uh, I was greeted by Mr. Best and the SGA. We have some brilliant, beautiful minds here in our city. I'm telling you. Uh, and I'm encouraged that we are in, in good hands. Um, and I also, I walked through the door and I saw my little cousin, Andre, I call him my little cousin, but he's about 6'6 six, six now, where he on the way he went. And my niece also attends the school, so this school has a spot near and dear in my heart. And I think that uh, education has always been the foundation of strong communities. And we have to put our money where our mouth is. There's the old scripture that say where your heart is. They were treasured be also. And so I want to thank those who made this opportunity possible for our young people to expand their minds and maximize their potential right here in Ward 8, right here in Southeast. And so this is, I feel like this home because I was here before it came. And so I'm a part of this vision. And anytime you all call me, I'm on the way. Principal Branch, you know, used to be up the street. You came on down and we've always been glue. And so I'm committed to excellence, especially for our young people of color. We have to give them an opportunity to thrive in a city that's growing and it's hard to live in, being as though the price of living is going up and up. And so I'm committed to education here in Ward 8, but also throughout the city. So my name is Treyon White and I'm honored to be here. I look forward to the possibilities of our young people right here in Ward 8. Thank you. God bless. I think we'll hear from our Chancellor of D.C. Public Schools, Dr. Lewis Furby. Come on up. Good morning. I think everyone was so eager to get to the microphone trying to figure out who's next on the list. So I'm glad to be here today and be uh, your next speaker. Uh, I'm always in awe when we open a new facility, we have a ribbon cutting like this, we give our students a best in class learning environment. And so really grateful to be here and to share this moment with you. Uh, this wouldn't be possible without the support of our Mayor, Mayor Bowser. Uh, Mayor Bowser is one of the most educated minded leaders in the United States of America. And she continues to support our schools and ensure that we have best in class facilities. So please join me in a round of applause uh, for our mayor. And, and Council Member Treyon White, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, there's certainly a symbiotic relationship between schools and community. Uh, when a school thrives, the community thrives, and when a community thrives, school thrives. So thank you, sir, for your commitment to Ward 8 and to all of our students across DC public schools. Uh, also, extremely grateful for the leadership of our State Superintendent of Education, Dr. Grant, who's with us today. Members of our State Board of Education also with us today. Uh, and also, you'll get a chance to hear from uh, the leader of Bard College. So we have the pleasure of having Dr. Bart Stein here today, and he's been extremely supportive of Bard DC in helping us realize the vision uh, that's come true today, and we're excited to be in this new facility. And last but not least, uh, let's give another round of applause to Josiah Best, who was our student speaker today. He did a phenomenal job, love a blue suit, did a great job. And, you know, I could go on and on about how, how wonderful our students are. And I think, you know, Councilman White hit it on the head when he said that we have bright minds. And I think what represent here today is not only Josiah, but all the students here at Bard, uh, an opportunity to expand their horizon and start the college journey early. Uh, and what we know is that when our students have the ability to take college courses while they're in high school, uh, not only do they get a jump start, but they're 
just better students and more successful when they leave us. So we're excited that we're expanding this opportunity and students here get the ability to earn a high school diploma and also their associate's degree as well. Uh, we're also excited that we have a phenomenal Department of General Services. Uh, so I'm always in awe uh, that when we come to a building and it's open and it's ready for ribbon cutting day, what it looked like when it started. Uh, and there's been a transformation in process uh, over the last couple months that brought us here today. And you get an opportunity here uh, from Director Anderson next about this amazing facility. I had a brief tour. I can tell you there's much more besides this black box. We have outdoor uh, facilities. We have a field, uh, amazing amenities upstairs. The views are phenomenal. So he gets to tell you about all the great amenities of the building. But I also want to recognize we have with us today Councilman Anita Bonds as well. Thank you for your support and leadership. Uh, and also Superintendent Jellick and all of our DCPS operation facility team that have been working hard to ensure that we're ready for opening day. And last, I want to also recognize that we've had volunteers, so many of you may know this already, but we were working around the clock uh, to get ready for opening day and to start the school year in 2023. So thank you all of our educators, the school administration here, everyone who volunteered, opened up boxes, got the furniture ready, uh, got us to the point that we are here today. Also special shout out to uh, Chief Ross who was supporting that effort over the holiday and we're excited to celebrate. So without further ado, it's my pleasure now to turn it over to uh, Director Anderson who's gonna share a little bit more about the facility and then we'll also get to hear from uh, Dr. Bostein as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Faraby and good morning everyone. Again, I am Keith Anderson, the Director of the Department of General Services, and it has been a great joy to manage the first phase of the new Bard High School uh, Early College and look forward to delivering the second phase later this year. Um, at DGS, we are laser focused on reimagining the high school experience and how we deliver new facilities uh, is part of that work. Chancellor Faraby, I'd like to thank you and your team for your partnership and support of DGS to make sure our school facilities uh, support our young people, their educators, uh, and the staff. Since 2007, uh, the Department of General Services has renovated more than 90 DC public schools, and I'm proud to include Bard as one of them today. The new, Bard in, uh, the new Bard DC includes a full renovation of the existing building, which will be approximately 108,000 square feet, spread over four floors with a total of 32 classrooms. Uh, with every school modernization, our work uh, begins uh, with building architects and contractors that utilize innovation uh, that enhances a building's performance and saves uh, real money through sustainability efforts. This school has been designed as a LEED Gold School with net zero energy and well certification. Again, advancing our sustainability goals. Uh, to meet these sustainability goals, the project also includes solar panels on the building roofs and over the parking area, green vehicle parking, electric vehicle charging stations, and a geothermal well, uh, which will help heat the building uh, throughout the year. As the Chancellor alluded to, there's also recreational aspects to this building, a beautiful new soccer field, an amazing gymnasium, I hope you guys see it before you leave here, uh, that will also uh, be able to be converted for theater use, uh, which is a great use of space for this building. I'd like to thank Mayor Bowser for the funding and commitments that allow us to expand our, and support our schools. I wanna thank the architects at Perkins Eastman DC for their partnership and give our appreciation also to MCN Build as our general contractor. My deepest, deepest appreciation also goes to my team, uh, the Capital Construction Services Division for your continued hard work and commitment on this and all of our projects. Tiffany Moore, Cassie Mullen, Janice Szymanski, Tom Henderson, Jenna, uh, Jenna Bellino, and Jadal McKenzie, job well done. 
I am also proud to announce that 138 District of Columbia residents worked on this project and we are exceeding our goal of 50% CBE participation on this project. I'd like to thank you again and welcome to your new school community. Uh, and with that, I'm not sure. Oh, Dr. Bach, okay. So it's still morning, so good morning to you all. I want uh, to join everyone else who has thanked the mayor and Chancellor Farabee and the entire school administration and uh, the state superintendent, Christina Grant, and also um, the um, faculty of Bard High School, Washington. and also the public officials, and uh, last but not least, our founding principal, Vanessa Anderson. And a school doesn't exist without students, so I want to really extend my gratitude and admiration for all the students at Bard High School, Washington, going Going to a new school and sticking it out um, is hard, and uh, you did. And without the students who are here now, we wouldn't be here. And um, we made a promise. You know, when you make promises, it's dangerous because they're hard to keep. And just in the nick of time, we brought them a new building. We said there's going to be a new building, right? I think they looked at us and thought, that's never going to happen. So I do really want to thank the entire city administration and all the officials in the education world here that made this possible. Let me say that um, a new building, and it's a beautiful building and beautifully built, is important. It shows our pride in the students and their possibilities. You know, buildings don't make great schools. But great schools can't exist without facilities that honor their ambition and lift their sights. If you're a musician and you walk into a beautiful hall that sounds great, you're going to play better because the hall speaks to you. And these spaces will speak to all the students that come here about quality, about the importance of knowledge. We heard about all the sustainability. Well, who figured that out? What's the science that's needed to figure that out? If we're going to save the planet, we have to know something. We can't save it with ignorance. So all the things that make the place terrific and a wonderful place to go to are a mirror of the ambitions that the students here should have. A school is not a building. It's about a spirit. And I want to particularly thank Mayor Bowser and the entire Washington community for believing in this idea. It's a very simple idea. We've been at it for 20 years. We started in Manhattan in 2001. The idea is simple, that we have abandoned adolescence. We're very concerned about early childhood education. We're pretty good at the higher education piece medical school, law school, business school, but the people that get lost in the shuffle are the people no adults like. <laughs> and that is teenagers. I often say people say to their beloved ones, let's have a baby. They never say, let's have a teenager. <laughs> so they don't know what they're getting into. It's a very odd and difficult moment in life where it's a transition from being a child to being an adult. And in that moment, oddly enough, learning happens more quickly than ever before or after. So it's a wonderful time to learn and a very difficult time to be in the world. The schools we have don't treat adolescents with dignity, don't trust them, and don't 
easily encourage a love of learning. And learning is essential for the future of every one of these students. In a country where race is still a major issue, where poverty is a major issue, where lack of opportunity is a major issue, the key in the 21st century is knowledge. It's not brawn, it's not swiftness, it's all the capacity that's between the ears, the things that during puberty have the least prestige. So how do we create a school that makes young people believe in their capacity to learn and their capacity to do something with real excellence? As Chancellor Farabee knows, founding a school is difficult. It's bumpy. You know, we don't know where the potholes are. You inherit an old school, you know exactly where the potholes were and which were fixed and which weren't. But with a new school, you're paving a new road. And we want to create in this building, together with the city of Washington, a sense of possibility of ambition. These young people have an opportunity to get a first class education from college faculty, from the ninth grade to year two, to walk away with a city diploma and a two year AA degree from a first class liberal arts college, tuition free. And we'd like to connect what we do with the working opportunities so all the graduates can have an easier path to getting good jobs with the future and also ways to continue their education beyond the AA. I'm proud to say that the Bard High Schools, this is the eighth of them in cities around the country, have the highest track record of young people from disadvantaged, underserved, and poor communities finishing a BA degree of any program directed at high school students. <laughs> so it works and Washington is our jewel. Let me end by saying that there's a wonderful vision here to create a real spirit. It'll take some doing and the new school is a huge boost and we're deeply grateful. And um, we would like in the nation's capital, while all that dishonesty, <laughs> decrepitude, <laughs> lying goes on around us without a sense of agreement about what's true and what isn't and how do we know things, there can be no democracy. We can't agree when we're wrong and when we're right. We may not be wrong, we may be somewhat right, we can't, if we don't have that common ground, we can't compromise. And when psychopaths who can't tell the truth from falsehood are in government, the only cure is education and a citizenry which will make sure it doesn't happen again. So if you don't mind the political angle of this, a healthy democracy depends on a first class educational system and this institution in the nation's capital, I hope, is the jewel in the crown of American education. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to, to be here. Uh, and it was, um, I walked in on the remarks about decrepitude and dishonesty at someplace else in Washington, D.C. Uh, but here at Bard, here at D.C. Public Schools and in Washington, D.C., uh, we are very, very proud to deliver this beautiful new school in Ward 8 for our children. I want to acknowledge our council member, council member Trayon White, I, who I know has been acknowledged, but I want to do it again. Trayon, Trayon and I, of course, share uh, a commitment to making sure our young people 
uh, get exactly what they need and that there it is equitable investment across all eight wards. Uh, our at-large council member, Anita Bonds, thank you, Anita, uh, for being here and for your focus. I want to acknowledge our state ed board members, Jacques Patterson, who I see, Carlene Reed, who I understand is here. Uh, I want to acknowledge her and uh, our public education team, uh, the chancellor of DC Public Schools. Give it up for Louis Farabee. And our superintendent of education, Dr. Christina Grant. And I am um, just so, so proud of what our, our real estate team has done, not only with this building, but buildings across the district. So Keith Anderson and DGS, thank you um, very much for what you've done. Uh, so Principal Anderson. Head of school branch. And you must be President Botstein, okay, Mr. President, uh, and all the incredible students here at Bard. Give them a big round of applause. We had this idea about Bard uh, coming to DC Public Schools um, some years ago. Uh, our focus, as Principal Botstein just mentioned, is we want our students to be able to experience a wonderful liberal arts education, have dual enrollment, and get a jump start in life and career by leaving DCPS uh, without uh, having to pay college tu tuition uh, with, a, ed with a AA. That's good, right? I think that's fantastic. Uh, that is definitely helping us get on a pathway to the middle class for those young people. Uh, that was back in 2019. A lot has happened uh, since then. Uh, and we know, especially our, our young people and our teenagers, uh, were very much affected by the pandemic, being separated from their beautiful schools, their colleagues, their teachers, uh, and coming back to school needing a lot more uh, than when they left. We know that this new building will be home to 375 students. Uh, they will have the unique opportunity here uh, to earn an associate's degree in college uh, credits. Uh, we know too that they are a part of the renaissance here, right here uh, in Congress Heights in, in Ward 8, uh, that they will have access uh, to amenities and transportation, uh, and they will have our complete and full attention, that they are safe, uh, they, they are safe getting here, they're safe while they're here, and they're challenged and loved uh, the, in their entire tenure here at Bard. Uh, we know uh, that we have invested quite a lot, and it's been said, I heard it said as I walked in, uh, that we know we have the premier pre-K uh, program anywhere in the country, right, Chancellor, uh, where families in Washington, D.C. can go to Free pre-K. We know that we are building a robust uh, and extensive all eight ward strategy for child care, right, Superintendent? Uh, and we know a lot of our parents can have that quality child care at no cost to them. Uh, and we're still challenged to build more and more places across the city. Uh, we know that our elementary grades and many of our ele uh, elementary schools are hotly demanded. And we know a focus in middle and high school is what we're focused on for the next four years. Reimagining high school is a real thing. Uh, we want to attract our kids. We want them to have challenging coursework. We want them to have exciting extracurricular activities. And we want them to have the best teachers anywhere in the United States of America. So our focus in public education is how we build that system. Not only the fastest improving urban school district, but the best urban school district in the United States of America. And I believe we can do it. Don't you? All right. And Bard 
is going to be a place uh, where kids from around uh, our city want to be. I, when we first opened Barter, I asked the kids, I had a little round table of kids and I asked them where they were coming from and how they were getting to school and, and why. And they all had, had different stories. But one child just stood up and said to me, you know, I read that I could get two years of college here and I don't have to pay. And I, I figured out how to get here. I walk, I take the bus, and then I show up at Bard, and this is my shot. And she decided for herself that that was what was going to best serve her. And that is what a quality uh, system of schools where kids, no matter where they live, can make a choice, kids and families, about what's best for them. So welcome to BART, everybody. Yes. Yes, sir. Council Member White. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. I did want to acknowledge uh, our safe passage workers and our Cure the Streets team. If you all can raise your hand uh, all across the room. And I didn't want to leave you out because sometimes when I come to the community, 2 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night, you guys are always here serving, even helping the, the school to get in order in the last couple of days. Like, I, we really appreciate you all. I want to thank you, Mayor Bowser, for investing in that because at the, at the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is safety. If our kids don't feel safe coming in and out of schools, then they're not unable to maximize their potential. So we appreciate you, appreciate you guys. We know you guys are not elected officials, but you all are equally as important for us to see our young, young people get to where they need to be. So I thank you guys, and I appreciate you guys. God bless. Um, so am I taking a few quick questions? Questions? Yes. Uh, on, on BARD, can somebody give us just some data on – how many students have graduated since it's opened? How many have graduated with AA degrees? Um, can we start there? Sure, yes. Yeah, so uh, Vanessa would be a great person to highlight some of the, the graduates. So uh, in our first class, everybody graduated with their AA degree, which is their associate's degree. Uh, we have approximately 130 students that are on track. Uh, to accomplish that as well as we look towards the class of 2023. But Vanessa, is there anything else you want to add about the graduates? Oh, I was going to say that. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, that our first two, um, our first two graduating classes um, were really small, as uh, uh, Chancellor Farabee mentioned. Um, of our and, and comprised 23 total graduates. Um, of those 20. Three, 100% of them earned their college, so their high school diplomas, and uh, 96% or uh, 22 of those 23 um, earned their associate's degrees. The one person who did not earned over 50 credits, however. Is this the only DCPS facility where somebody can get an AA degree for free, and are there plans to expand this kind of opportunity to other schools? Yeah, thank you, Mark, for that question. So we have been working as the mayor uh, mentioned earlier, to, to redesign and reimagine the high school experience across D.C. public schools. So this is not the only opportunity for students to earn uh, their associate's degree. We have similar partnerships uh, with Trinity University. For example, we recently launched a partnership at Coolidge uh, Early College Academy in partnership with Trinity where students can earn their associate's degree as well. Very, really similar format where students take college courses in their junior and senior year. All throughout uh, the District of Columbia, there are also other opportunities. Uh, we have a partnership with uh, School Without Walls and George Washington University in a similar structure. And then students can also take courses at other universities, such as University uh, District of Columbia, uh, also Howard University, uh, Georgetown as well. So we continue to work with our higher ed partners to ensure that students get opportunity to earn courses. And what's important about that, Mark, also is that students can do that over the summer as well. We have a, a robust option for students to take college courses over the summer. Uh, if I, off topic, okay. uh, Chancellor Fairby, can you update us on the uh, COVID vaccine requirement back to school? Do you have the numbers of how many students were not in compliance and were turned away? Yeah, so we have any students that we turned away. Uh, we had over 39,000 staff and student members 
uh, who who provided their results to us, and we had approximately 250 uh, positive cases for for students that were reported, and about 100 positive cases that reported for staff. And this is the muscle that we built over time that's extremely strong. We've had our test to return strategy all throughout last school year and this school year as well. Uh, we did the similar strategy over Thanksgiving break as well. And is the plan to continue that strategy, the test to return? Yeah, we're continuing to monitor health conditions in partnership with uh, DC Health to determine if this will be a strategy that we will continue with for February break. Uh, so we'll be in communication with schools and communities in the coming weeks to what to expect for February and also for our spring break in April. And then if I could ask on a different topic on MacArthur High School, can you tell me just a little bit about the plans there? And, and when was the last time DC opened up a brand new high school, not, not just a new building or a new location, but opened a new high school, and can you address some of the concerns that you've heard over the planning process from residents both about the MacArthur High School, the Fox Hall campus, and, and just going forward where we are there? Yeah, so you know, one could argue that this, this is also a new high school uh, that we opened, uh, so a great example here. Uh, but it's not a neighborhood high school, so it's been some time since we've had a new neighborhood high school. Uh, MacArthur is designed to relieve some of the capacity at Jackson Reed High School. Uh, and it will primarily serve students that are feeding directly from Hardy Middle School. Uh, and we've had a number of engagement sessions with the Hardy School community. We're proud that we recently named uh, a principal, uh, Dr. McCray, who was a very successful principal for us in the D.C. Public School at Stanton Elementary School. He is on the engagement tour uh, and speaking with the community about his vision for the school. And we've had rich discussions with the community around the enrollment strategy, which will be to build a high school by grade level. So we're primarily focused on ninth graders and a few 10th graders for next school year. Uh, and we'll be building out the staffing plans throughout the spring in preparation for a successful opening in August. And just the concerns about the, the Hardy campus, the Fox Hall campus, and the infringement on open space, that kind of? Yeah, I think we've got a strong plan for space. I know there were some questions about uh, traffic as well. There was a traffic study, and I think we've worked through some solutions to ensure that students can get on and off campus successfully without uh, a lot of disruptions to the day. And we'll continue to ensure that we monitor the use of the space. Uh, there's a great field space there we're excited about. Uh, gymnasium uh, suited for a high school uh, and there's already been significant interest in the my school DC lottery and families who've already uh, submitted applications for MacArthur High School so we're excited about the opening in August uh, off topic question if you don't mind yes Sam what's your vision for Duke Ellington um, in regards to the art programming what does that look like under a scenario where DCPS would have total control yeah, thank you, Sam, for that question. I think it, it, it's important to, to call out that the school has been very successful, uh, has had a very high graduation rate. Students have gone on to be very successful uh, in all forms of the art, and that is the vision is that continues. I think what we were trying to accomplish is, is, is in response to the Duke Ellington leadership concerns around uh, compensation, we presented some options for uh, staff to be a part of the DCPS uh, employee uh, makeup. We also presented some options for restructuring administration to ensure that the operation of the school continues to maintain at a high level. So uh, we look forward to those continued conversations and we look forward to ensuring that the school is, is a spotlight and a beacon for successful performing arts. I have um, a question concerning attendance policy. Um, from my understanding, correct me if I'm in, um, incorrect, if I'm wrong, um, if students are absent or late for school, actually late for school for their first class, then marked absent for the rest of the day, is that? There, there was a, 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 a regulation that has been modified, so we call it the 80-60 rule, but there was a policy that if you miss a certain portion of the day, then you were marked absent for the day, but that has actually been modified for this school year. Uh, you want to speak to it? Sure. 
All right, thank you for the question. So in previous school years, we followed what was called the 80-20 rule. If you missed a portion of the day, you would be marked absent for the day. It's fitting that we're in the room with Council Member White and members of state board, because we worked together through the spring and in July, July, uh, we changed that policy that we now have a 60-40 rule. We also changed the attendance code significantly. So if a student is late to school because of transportation or because they're late, because of an issue outside of their control, schools have a significant amount of um, privilege or power to address the attendance of students because we were very clear and heard directly from our students um, some of the challenges they had with ensuring that first period did not mean that they would be marked absent for the full day. So we would encourage families, parents, et cetera, to follow up with their school's leadership to make sure that they're up to date on the current attendance policies for the district. Thank you. You're welcome. Mayor Bowser, tomorrow, January 6th, anniversary of January 6th, there's been a lot of focus on the first responders, the police officers who responded, and some actually will be getting um, uh, uh, notice or medals from the president uh, either today or tomorrow. There hasn't been a lot of focus on the D.C. fire first responders who also responded that day to the Capitol. Uh, do you have any thoughts just about about the D.C. firefighters and their role back on January 6th and, and, and the important role that they played that day? Well, they played an important role that day. Uh, they play an important role every day. Uh, the chief, um, Donnelly, was with us throughout uh, the response at the Jayhawk. And uh, our firefighters and EMS personnel in particular uh, were called to the Capitol uh, in, on, of course, on standby in case there was uh, fire suppression needed, uh, but also uh, to help with the injured. So uh, they, of course, keep us safe every day, and we're grateful for them. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Sure. Chancellor, teacher training and development is the question. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what we're really excited about is there's, there's many pathways for teachers to expand their leadership. So DCPS has a number of career ladders for teachers to expand their leadership into coaching other teachers, providing professional learning with other teachers. And we find that teachers who provide professional learning to teach us to learn, right? So not only does it benefit those that are attending those sessions, but those that are also presenting. Uh, this school year, we've had a laser light focus on the science of reading, uh, ensuring that all of our educators understand how the brain processes uh, uh, in terms of aspects of, of phonemic awareness, in terms of decoding, um, all aspects of early literacy to ensure that our students understand what they read and can comprehend well. We're now transitioning that into what we're calling the science of math because we've seen that there's a lot of ground we need to cover with mathematics instruction. And then we're also continuing to ensure that our principles around equity, uh, ensuring that our students are recognized regardless of all walks of life is threaded through all of our professional learning experiences to ensure that all of our curriculum is culturally relevant. And lastly, since you asked about what our teachers are doing, our teachers wrote and also produced the illustrations for what we call our Readers Next Door. So these are books and readers for our youngest readers uh, that we've started this school year that represents our city. So um, you, there, there's representation of communities right here in Ward 8. Uh, and we're excited because we know when students see themselves in their community and what they're reading, uh, they get excited about reading and become very joyful. Thank you. Okay, speakers, please go to the stage and we'll cut the ribbon.
In the green. Miss, miss. You gotta come down. Can you